Good morning, everyone. Uh, today I have another episode of Bringing the Zoo to You. My name is Maureen. I'm one of the bird keepers here at the Brookfield Zoo. Today we're going to talk about Puna teal. They're one of our newest species that we have in the bird department. They arrived from Seattle Zoo just a few weeks ago, so this is their big debut. So you can see these guys here on exhibit. They're in our reptiles and birds free flight exhibit. They're the birds with the dark heads and the bright blue bills. Now there's no physical difference between males and females. So we do have one male and one female. We can tell them apart because they have leg bands. Males have their leg bands on the right side. Females have metal leg bands on the left side. And they also have the colored zip ties. They're not the only waterfowl species in this exhibit. You can see that we've got a couple of blue wing teal, which are native species to this area. So Puna teal are from South America. They can be found in the high altitude lakes and rivers of Bolivia, Peru, and Chile. These guys will live in small groups, forming monogamous pairs for breeding. They will lay up to five to seven eggs and their eggs are kind of a pink color, which is pretty neat. So like I said, these guys are a brand new species to the Brookfield Zoo. So one of the questions that is asked is, how did these guys get here? Um, you can insert the obvious jokes of they flew, but it's a pretty complicated process between zoos transporting animals. These guys came to us from Seattle Zoo. So quite a few weeks ago, we started some communications with the other institution, um, veterinarians, animal curators, animal program staff, are all working together to get these guys from one institution to the other. They will have vet exams and other pre-shipment checks to make sure that they can travel and that they are in a good bill of health. <laughs> bill. Yep, pun intended. <laughs> um, we'll also communicate with the animal staff to make sure we are offering them the same diet, we have any necessary exhibit modifications may be needed for an incoming animal, make sure we have quarantine space, and we also plan the shipments. So believe it or not, these guys actually shipped here on a cargo plane to O'Hare Airport where we had to pick them up. These guys then come from the airport straight into our hospital so they can go through a quarantine period. They do get health checks before they ship, but just to make sure that they're healthy enough to meet our collection birds and our collection animals, they do go through a brief quarantine period but we'll make sure we can observe their behaviors, monitor their weight, their health. They'll get another quick check from our veterinary department. Once they get the all clear, they'll come out onto exhibit. So when we introduced these guys, we took a few extra precautions to make sure they would get along to, with everyone in this exhibit. We have a trap cage over here, which is a little bit hard to see through our grasses, but Rod, our Congo peafowl, is doing a great job highlighting it, hanging out in there. We did put him in the trap cage just for a short time, just to make sure that the new Puna teal would get acclimated to their exhibit. They'd learn where the food was, the water was, before we started introducing some of the new species. About 30 minutes after we introduced the Puna teal, our Congo peafowl came out and everyone got along just fine. We we'll usually have a lot of staff there also just doing observations and making sure all the birds in the, or the animals in the aviary are getting along okay. So again, we've got our Puna teal here. Uh, they are probably not quite two pounds. They're a similar size to the North American wood duck that you could find around here. They're a little bit bigger than the ring, blue winged teal that we have on exhibit. And they're perfectly standing next to their diet. So in the wild, these guys would eat aquatic plants. They would eat seeds. They would eat insects. So here at the zoo, we feed them something very similar. They get lots of greens. They get a special pelleted diet, and of course they get insects, which is some of their favorite things to eat. Why are their bills blue? Their bills are blue. That's a really good question. I'm not sure why their bills are blue. Um, their bills stay that color all year long. Some species of birds actually will more for their plumage will change colors in the breeding season, but these guys will look like this all year long. So some species of duck will get blue bills to attract mates. But these guys just have their blue bills. Hmm. Um, are they, are they um, enjoying 
their new habitat, does it seem like? Yeah, I think that they're doing really well here. So some behaviors that we want to look for is make sure the birds are doing all the things that they naturally would do. So they're walking around, they're bathing, they're pruning themselves, they're checking out food, they're drinking water. And they don't really appear stressed. They're curious. They're looking at all the other species around here, but they're not hiding. They're not running away from things. So these guys are exhibiting some really calm behavior. So this is really good to see for a new species entering an exhibit. As you can see, they're kind of marching around like they own the place. So <laughs> I would say that they're very comfortable in their new habitat. Yeah, they do seem very comfortable. What do the other ducks think of them? Um, so far, so good. We haven't seen any negative interactions. Um, at this point, after a few days, we probably would have seen something. And negative interactions can just be as simple as displacing each other mm -hmm. over food or other good spots to sit and hang out. But so far, no problems. Uh, today seems like the two species are not quite hanging out together. The first day they did, but again, we have not seen any negative interaction. So as these two species get used to each other, we anticipate them interacting and hanging out together a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Matt, you said that the males and the females are virtually indistinguishable. Correct. Um, what about other, um, the other ducks that are here? So these guys, there are also is no physical difference. These are all three males, so they would look the same anyway. Okay. But both of these species are what's considered not sexually dimorphic. Okay. So sexual dimorphism would be your peacocks are your obvious example. The peacocks have the, the blue feathers, the giant trains, awesome tails, and the females are a little more plain colored. But again, these two species of waterfowl are not sexually dimorphic. Is that common in waterfowl? Um, it can depend on the species, and a lot of it has to do with how they nest, how they care for their young. Mallards, for example, the males are a little bit flashier colored. The females need to be more camouflaged so they can nest and not be noticed by predators. The females also do a little bit more of the chick rearing. So a lot of it has to do with the biology and the behaviors of that particular species. Oh, there's another duck up there on the waterfall. They are a lot of fun, and I think a lot of times they get overlooked because they're you know, almost directly under the walkway. Yeah, they're a little hard to see sometimes. Um, you know, once the building's open, you just kind of come into the aviary, and they're definitely almost always hanging out in the water. So, but they're usually up front and center. So, mm -hmm. hang out long enough, you'll definitely watch them <laughs> doing all their duck things that they do. They're pretty fun to watch. Mm -hmm. Do we have other duck species here at Brookfield Zoo? Yeah, so in our swamp building, which is now open, we've got quite a few waterfowl species. Um, I would definitely come and check those out. If you're visiting the zoo, we've got um, herons and ibis and spoonbills. And we've got some whistling ducks. And we've got some red-headed ducks. We've got quite a few waterfowl species in that building, which is open to guests right now. Mm -hmm. And um, speaking of buildings being open, is reptiles and birds or, or even feathers and scales, are either of those buildings open yet? Not yet. Um, right now, the Living Coast, if you want to see birds, the Living Coast is open and the swamp. But for now, I just keep checking our website and we'll keep that as updated as we can on our expected building openings. Mm -hmm. So aside from the blue bill, is there anything else that's unique about these particular ducks? Um, these guys, it's pretty neat that they live in a high altitude climate. Uh, they can live, you know, 10, 12, 14,000 feet, um, which can make them fairly cold hardy. We do keep them inside. We don't have many outdoor waterfall exhibits, minus our pelicans. So these guys will still live in here, but they can be a very cold hardy species. Uh, I'm not sure quite through a Chicago winter, but they can tolerate temperature extremes pretty well. So that's kind of an exciting feature for them. And we did see them flying around a little mm -hmm. bit. Um, are they going to be a species that's going to be coming up on the walkway at all? And for, for um, those of us who are a little bit shy about birds? You know, we're not, we can't tell just yet since they've only been in this exhibit for a few, this habitat for a few days. Most likely not. Um, our rod, our Congo peafowl, he also will sometimes hang out on the walkway, but only when guests aren't here. Even if staff come through the building, they tend to hop off. Um, they kind of tend to avoid people, so even though they can fly, I would not expect them to be hanging out on the public walkway. Everything they need is down here. They got their food, they've got their water, so I don't really anticipate them hanging out on the public walkway too much. That is good news for people like me, they're <laughs> big. <laughs>
<laughs> um, let's see. What other questions do we have? And they are a type of duck. They're not just related to ducks, yes. correct? Yes. Okay. They are called teal, which is a type of duck. And can you remind us uh, where they're found in the wild? So these guys are South American species. They're found in the lakes and rivers in the high altitude regions of Bolivia, Peru, and Chile. And what about the other ducks in this, um, the free flight area? The blue winged teal, these guys are actually native species. They can oh, actually be okay. found in these areas this time of year as well. So the Puna teal do not migrate from where they are from. The ring teal do migrate. So actually this time of year, uh, you can spot ring teal in the wild. Interesting, and they get along even though they would never interact. Yeah, in the, the wild, wild, it would be very unusual if they okay. came across each other, but they've got similar behaviors. They live in similar, you know, marshland type areas, lots of grasses. So we figured they would do really well together. And so far it's going really well. Oh, that's really cool. Um, what kinds of bugs do they like to eat? So these guys get a variety of insects. We'll give them wax worms, we'll give them mealworms, larger mealworms called mighty mealworms, and sometimes crickets. So we give them a variety because that's what they would do in the wild. They would come across a variety of insects. Uh, today they got mighty mealworms, and I don't know how crazy they are about them, um, <laughs> but I know that they ate them really well in their quarantine. So. And these are siblings, correct? They're not a breeding Yeah, pair. so these guys are clutch mates. So that means that they came from the same collection of eggs. So they're, the, right. they're hatched a few days apart from each other. So these guys will not be a breeding pair. They're just an exhibit pair. If, if they were a breeding pair, how, how often would they lay eggs and about how many would be in a clutch? So these guys will breed in the wild. They breed um, November to January. So this is just outside of their normal breeding season and they would lay five to seven eggs, sort of in a, like a grassy, like a shallow grassy indentation in the grass, in the land. Um, sometimes their nest can be actually quite a distance from waterways. And they'll lay five to seven eggs and their eggs are actually kind of pink tinted. Ooh. So kind of a neat color. You think it would be blue. Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, thank you guys so much for checking this out today. Uh, we're hopeful in the future that you can come to the zoo and see these guys. Until then, just keep checking our website for any updates on building openings. So thank you guys again for tuning in.